okay everyone so we're going to start our science lesson today okay so the new our new topic is all about humans and nutrition and things along those lines so we're going to explore a little bit more so today we're going to have a look at types of nutrition okay so our LO is to know and understand the different types of nutrition now living things need food to grow to be strong and to be healthy and without food you won't do any of these things okay and that works the same for plants and it works the same for animals so with plants they use something called photosynthesis which i know we've looked at previously when we looked at our plant topic okay now plants make their own food it's a process called photosynthesis they use water sunlight and carbon dioxide which is the gas in the air that we breathe out to produce food in their leaves okay now what would happen to animals if they try to obtain food in the same way as plants it just wouldn't happen would it okay because we can't make our own food we have to buy our own food and then we can cook it so i guess we can make our own food but we can't without actually going to buy something or catching something so we're not like a plant and we can create our own food in our bodies by absorbing things. And it's the same with animals as well. Now, what kind of foods do humans need? Food is commonly divided into five food groups, okay? I want you to have a think about how many of these you can remember. So the biggest category we have that's quite on par with the carbohydrates is fruit and vegetables and we aim to eat five of these a day dried frozen tinned fruits and vegetables count as well as fruit juices and it's an important source of vitamins and minerals which reduce your risk of disease and help to keep you healthy however you should limit to Limit fruit juices and smoothies to 150 mils a day because they contain a lot of sugar. Okay, so you might be drinking a smoothie or some juice, but they contain a lot of sugar, which is bad for you. Okay, in excessive amounts. Our next category is the carbohydrates. So it's potatoes, bread, rice, pasta, and other starchy carbohydrates. These are the things that give us energy. Okay, so we need this to be able to run around the playground or to run around the park and to get up in the morning you know with all the stuff we need for energy the next bit down here this little category is oil and spreads and we try to choose unsaturated oils and we use it in small amounts because this can be quite bad for you okay our next category is dairy alternatives dairy and alternatives these are important for making sure we have strong teeth and bones okay so you need to have your milk you need to have your cheese you need to have yogurt because these are things that make your bones healthy and your teeth healthy and they're a good source of calcium our next one along here is beans pulses fish eggs meat and other proteins these are very important for helping us grow and build muscle we try to eat two portions of fish a week and try to reduce the intake of any red or processed meat, okay? Now, I know I don't eat fish because I don't like it and I'm allergic to it. However, I would then substitute that for different things in that category. So, for example, lentils and beans and chicken, okay? So, let's move on. Now, food groups are shown on the Eat Well plate, and this is government guidance as well. So here's our plate, and this is what, when we're preparing dinners, it should look like. So this section of our plate should be fruit and veg, nice big section. Again, the same carbohydrates, little bit of meat, little bit of dairy and alternatives, and a tiny, tiny bit of oils and spreads, okay? So there are seven nutrients, carbohydrates, protein, fiber, fats, vitamins, minerals and water. And that was important actually. So nutrients are substances that animals need to stay alive and stay healthy. These nutrients are found in all the foods that we eat, okay? So, proteins. 
proteins help your body to grow and repair itself okay so foods that are high in proteins include red meat fish beans and yogurt carbohydrates like i said earlier gives us energy so these include bread pasta fruit and potatoes Fats also give us energy, however, we shouldn't have lots of them. So nuts, oils, avocados, butter, all give you energy as well, but they have a high fat content. Vitamins help keep your body healthy. They include oranges, carrots, beef, nuts. Can you see that there's a lot of crossover between the categories? Because one piece of food can have lots of different nutrients in it. Minerals keep your body healthy. Food in high minerals include milk, spinach, salt and sweet corn. Water helps to move nutrients in your body and get rid of waste that you don't need. It's essential nutrient for survival and while it's really important to drink plenty of water, it's also important to remember that many foods contain water as well. So foods that have high water content are tomatoes, cucumbers, lettuce and strawberries fiber helps you to digest the food that you've eaten okay so this basically helps you go to the toilet so these include cereal apples whole grain bread and lentils just give you a minute to have a read over that So, nutrients for animals. Although the Eat Well Guide provides human beings with guidance to know how much different foods to eat, it doesn't apply to other animals. So some animals need and eat more certain nutrients than others, and there are special terms for these animals that eat particular types of foods. So carnivores are animals that feed on other animals, so they tend to be only they are only meat eaters. Herbivores only eat plants. And omnivores, like we are, eat both meat and plants. Here's some examples below. I wonder if there's any there that surprised you or you didn't know about. I might think the pig. I wouldn't have thought that the pig was an omnivore, but however it is. So carnivores eat lots of meat so they get lots of energy from protein rather than from carbohydrates and this is because their body is designed for this. A carnivore's diet is mostly made up of protein but the meat also provides vitamins, minerals and fats like I said earlier. There's a lot of crossover. Although carnivores have a diet which is high in protein, not all carnivores require the same balance of nutrients and that's the same with humans as well. Herbivores get their energy from eating plants. As plants are often not high in carbohydrates, proteins and fats, herbivores need to eat large amounts of plant-based food to give them the energy that they need. So they spend, some herbivores spend a lot of their day eating. So herbivores eat a wide variety of plants and some of, some of them might only eat a limited number of plants, meaning that they will consume a smaller range of vitamins and minerals. So elephants, for example, eat a wide variety of plants such as branches, fruit, grasses and leaves. Koalas, on the other hand, only eat eucalyptus tree leaves. These leaves are do not provide high levels of energy for these animals, but koalas sleep for 20 hours a day, so they don't need as much energy as others. Omnivores get their nutrients from both meat and plants, just like humans, and therefore can be more flexible in what they eat, often only eating what is available to them. So, for example, the brown bear will eat fish when it catches them in the river, but it will also pick berries if they're available to eat. And even pandas, who are famous for eating bamboo for most of their day, occasionally eat rats and birds if they catch or find them. Different omnivores vary in the balance of nutrients that they require. 
So your task today is to create a poster explaining the seven different types of nutrients that humans need. So you can play back this video and have another listen. Okay, and then I want you to take a picture and send it through to us on Class Dojo. Okay, good luck.